we're going to be talking about planes in three space. So, you know, a plane is essentially, you can kind of think of it as a sheet that's, you know, floating out in three space somewhere, it extends infinitely in all directions, etc. Um, so if I have, you know, some plane like this, you know, try to draw three dimensionally here, right? This really keeps on going in, in all directions, right? It extends forever to infinity. But how do I get an equation of a plane in three space? Well, you need two pieces of information in order to do that, okay? The first piece of information that you need is, uh, you know, it's not so different than finding um, the equation of a line. You need something about the slope of the plane, right? And the best way to get the information about the slope is to have a normal vector. So if I have a vector that is normal to this plane, and remember normal is just another math word for perpendicular. So let's say I have a vector that points like this, that is perpendicular to the plane. If I have that vector, that completely determines the slope of the plane because there's only one plane that can be normal, uh, or sorry, uh, one slope that uh, could be normal to this vector, right? You just take like a pencil, stick at an angle and try to make it normal to your hand, right? There's only one slope that you can give your hand in order to actually make this work because it's normal in all directions. That's a really, you know, bad 3D, I'm trying to make sure, make it look 3D on all sides. But yeah, it's a right angle on all sides. And that tells us the slope of the plane if we have a normal vector, but it doesn't tell us where the plane is, right? So we need some kind of intercept information. Um, and that can be found by having a point that's on the plane, okay? So I'm gonna say that this is my normal vector n, and this is gonna be my point p naught. And p naught I know, so we're gonna say, as, as do I know my normal vector. So my normal vector is gonna be, uh, we'll say nx, ny, and nz. And then my point p naught is going to be equal to uh, px, py, and pz. Okay, so to get the equation of a plane, I'm going to make another point over here, and this is going to be point p. This is a variable point. So p I do not know, and p is going to be x, y, and z. So in the previous video, we talked about dot product. And one of the properties of dot product that we mentioned was that if I take the dot product of two perpendicular vectors, it should be zero. So if I draw a vector that goes from P naught to P and I dot it with a normal vector, well, that should be zero because the vector P naught P lies in the plane and the normal vector N is perpendicular to the plane, which means that if I do vector N dotted with vector P naught P, I should get zero. So let's do that. So if I have nx, ny, nz dotted with this vector, and to generate this vector, right, what we're going to do is say, okay, well, we have these two points. I'm going to draw a vector, you know, that goes from here to here and from here to here. So a vector that points toward those points kind of from the origin. Um, and then what I can do is say, uh, you know, p naught minus p to get this, this, this value. So I'm going to dot it with, uh, I'm going to have, or sorry, not p naught minus p p minus p naught. So I'm going to have x minus px, I'm going to have y minus py, and z minus pz. And this is going to be equal to zero. So if I do this out, if I distribute, say, okay, nx, x minus N, nx, px. So I'm going to take all the nx variable terms and leave them on the left, and all the negative nx, p, x, y, z terms, and I'm just going to move those over to the right. So I'm going to have nxx plus nyy plus nzz is equal to nxpx plus nypy plus nzpz. Okay, now all of this is just a constant. And often this is what you're gonna have to find. So this constant, we're gonna we call it d. Um, and note that what this constant really is, is all we did is we took this part of the equation and we plugged in a point, px, py, pz, for x, y, and z. So this gives us a roadmap to find any equation of a plane, because if you know a point and you know the normal vector, you look and you say, hey, the coefficients are just the components of the normal vector. So I can read off a normal vector uh, from this plane, or if I'm given a normal vector, I can just write down this part of the equation. And then to get the rest of it, to get the constant, kind of the, 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 the intercept, all you need is a point to plug in, okay? So let's look at how you would do this in an example. Maybe I get 
this top here. There we go. There we go. Okay. So let's say I want to find the equation of a plane containing a point three five seven, and it has a normal vector, which is going to be equal to eleven i hat plus two j hat. Uh, plus 13 k hat. Okay, so this point is in the plane, and this is our normal vector to the plane. So immediately I can just say, oh, well, that means I'm going to have 11 x plus 2 y plus 13 z, and that's going to be equal to some constant. To find this constant, I'm going to plug in this point. So I'm going to have 11 times 3 plus 2 times 5 plus 13 times 7, and that's going to equal d. And when I do that, I get 134 is uh, equal to my d value. So now I found my constant. I know my coefficients already, so I can just rewrite my equation as 11x plus 2y plus 13z uh, is equal to 134. Don't know why this came out so weird. Yeah, and this would be my equation of the plane. Okay, and I would be done. Yay. Uh, let's go in the other direction. Let's say instead uh, I have the equation of a plane. Let's say my equation of the plane is 7x minus 3y plus 8z is equal to negative 51. And I want to find a normal vector to this plane. Well, the obvious one is to just write down the normal vector of the plane is just going to be 7, negative 3, 8. And that's totally acceptable. That is a normal vector to the plane. But what if I ask for two normal vectors to the plane, or three normal vectors, or four normal vectors? The easy thing to remember for this is this vector is a normal vector to the plane. But if I increase or decrease the length of this vector or even change its direction, it doesn't change the fact that it's normal to this plane. So if I have a normal vector n, I can generate an additional normal, normal vector by multiplying it by a constant c. And this will also be a vector that is normal to the plane. Um, so really, there's an infinite number of normal vectors to the plane. Um, and and uh, it's not, you know, the, the easiest one to get is always just reading the coefficients off, but there really are just an infinite number. You can just multiply by, by scalars. Okay, let's do uh, maybe like a slightly harder one. Let's say we want to find the equation of the plane. Uh, so I'll write some of this out. So find uh, planar equation. Find the planar equation. Um, <clears throat> that is perpendicular uh, of a plane, sorry, of a plane, obviously of a plane, that is perpendicular to the line segment, perpendicular to the line segment, right in cursive, it's easier on my program, uh, line segment connecting uh, point one, which is gonna be three, eight, negative two, and point two, which is going to be seven, negative one, and six. And we'll say that it is passing through uh, the point thirty percent of the way between. Uh, P1 and P2, okay? So what that tells me is that P1, P2 is normal to the plane, okay? And if it's normal to the plane, then I can say that my normal vector is going to be equal to uh, the, you know, the difference between them. 7 minus 3 i hat uh, plus negative 1 minus 8 j hat plus 6 minus negative 2 k hat. So my normal vector um, is going to be equal to uh, 4, negative 9, 8. Okay, great. So I have a normal vector. Awesome. Um, but what I need is I still need a point, right? So I got to figure out what the point is. So uh, to get the point, I'm going to do uh, the point P, right, or the vector that points to that point, is going to be equal to um, 3i hat 
plus 8j hat. I'm going to be careful I don't run out of room here. Minus 2k hat, right? So this is one of my points, my point, point 1. And I have to add to that third, the vector that's 30% of the way from p1 to p2, right? So it's going to be 0 0.3 times the normal vector that I just found. So 4, uh, ugh, hmm. uh, 4i hat minus 9j hat plus 8k hat. Okay. Remember, this is kind of like the, when we were doing the, the other problems, right? Where I have vector A, I have vector B. If I want a vector that points between them, then I say, okay, if I have vector AB, I want to do vector A plus vector, which is 30% right of the way from A to B. This isn't really 30%, but you get the idea. So that vector uh, is going to give me the point that I want to plug in. It's going to give me 4.2 i hat. Um, plus 5.3 j hat plus 0 0.4 k hat, okay? Which means the point that I want to plug in, right, is 4.2, 5.3, 0 0.4, which means that I can say that I have 4 times 4.2, then I have minus 9 times 5.3, plus 8 times 0 0.4, equals d, some constant, right? And when I put all this in, I get that d is equal to negative 27.7, which means that my final planar equation, my actual answer for the problem, is going to be 4x minus 9y plus 8z is equal to negative 27.7. Okay, this is my answer. So again, it's always about finding a vector that's normal to the plane and finding a point that you can plug in to get your d value here. Um, the way that you have to go about doing that, you often want to remember tricks, right? So remember, oh, dot product of perpendicular things is zero, or come back to this, you know, kind of graphical addition of vectors to find a, a point on the plane. But once you can get that information, that will usually be the trickier part, um, then it's relatively straightforward to go from when you have the normal vector and you have a point to plug in, it's pretty straightforward to go from there to the equation of the plane.